Polysaccharides are all polymers, which are very large molecules made up of simple sugars. They include starches, glycogen, and cellulose. We'll see how these are produced or synthesized. Polysaccharides are made up of many smaller molecules called monomers joined together. One common monomer is glucose. Glucose is a simple sugar or monosaccharide. Two other common monosaccharides are galactose and fructose. You can see these all have slightly different shapes or structures. A molecule of glucose contains six carbon atoms, which are numbered like this. These two OH groups are used to bond glucose monomers to each other. We'll see how that works. Here are two glucose units. We'll consider this OH on the first glucose molecule and this H on the second glucose molecule. An enzyme in plants enables two glucose molecules to join together. Let's have a look at this. We can imagine the H and the OH coming off and the two molecules moving together. We should point out here that the actual mechanism for this is much more complex and involves enzymes. The simplified animation here just helps us visualize how the two glucose molecules can bond together. When two glucose molecules bond together, they form another sugar called maltose. Because maltose is a combination of two glucose monomers, it is called a double sugar or disaccharide. The H atom from one glucose bonded to the OH from the other glucose forms a molecule of water. Because a larger molecule is made from two smaller molecules, this process is called synthesis. And because a water molecule is released, it is called dehydration synthesis. Another disaccharide is formed when a molecule of galactose and a molecule of glucose bond to each other in a dehydration synthesis to form lactose. Lactose is a common disaccharide found in milk products. Still another disaccharide is formed when a molecule of glucose and a molecule of fructose bond to each other with a dehydration synthesis to form sucrose, a common disaccharide found in table sugar. Now we'll go back to our molecule of maltose and see how we can add more glucose units to it to form a polysaccharide. More glucose molecules bond to this maltose and grow this chain by the process of dehydration synthesis, eventually forming starch, which consists of very long chains of glucose units that have some branching. Starch molecules can consist of up to 4,000 glucose units. Glycogen is another polysaccharide. You can see it has a lot more branches than starch. It is produced in animals rather than plants. When blood levels of glucose are high, the liver produces glycogen, which is a way of storing glucose for when it is needed. Glycogen is stored in the liver and in the muscle cells. Like starch, glycogen also consists of long chains of glucose units. But in glycogen, the chains are much more highly branched than in starch. A different type of polysaccharide called cellulose is produced in plants. Cellulose consists of long, unbranched chains of glucose units. Notice that the linkage between glucose units is different in cellulose than it is in starch or glycogen. In cellulose, the oxygen atoms between the glucose units alternate their positions. Whereas in starch and glycogen, the oxygen atoms between glucose units are all in the same relative positions. It is important to note that the human body is capable of digesting starch and glycogen, but it is not capable of digesting cellulose. The body breaks down starches and glycogen in steps, eventually ending up with many single glucose molecules, which the body uses for energy. Even though the polysaccharide cellulose is not broken down by the body, it provides the body with fiber, which is believed to help with digestion in the large intestine.